What's up, guys? Congratulations on the promotion. Uh, just kind of what Thanks. your thoughts about that. Did you expect it? Just kind of how um, I don't think you ever expect. Um, I think a lot of times you just you try to go to work and do your role and do it to the best of your ability. And um, obviously I was aware that the position was open and was hopeful. Um, it's something that I believe a year ago when I came back, I kind of voiced that was my dream was to be linebackers coach here. And so there was kind of a lot of <clears throat> unknown going through those few weeks and going on the road and recruiting for the first time and all of that actually uh, in person and doing that stuff. But I felt, I felt pretty confident that I had done the best job I could have to prepare myself for the opportunity and just grateful that, uh, that uh, Coach Day believed in me. A lot of logistics, <laughs> you know, you're trying to figure out. Um, I, I mean, ever since I was young, I've, I've always, I think it was my dad, I always wanted to be on time. So really, that was, to be honest, that was the first thing that popped to my mind. If I told a coach I was going to be there at a certain time, I wanted to be early or on time. Um, and you're just trying to map out how many schools can you see within a certain amount of time and trying to prioritize what players you wanted to see, you know, in those time uh, periods as well. So I, I thrived on the opportunity to meet these players, um, their coaches, the people who are important to them in person. It's one thing that I think to do it over the phone. It's another thing to be able to do it in person and, let them see you and face to face, I think is a lot more impactful. So I was grateful for that opportunity and look forward to continue to do it. I hope so. Um, I mean, coach day was with me day one um, when we went down through Florida, you know, so I quite honestly, I viewed it as a uh, job interview when I was there with him. Um, I knew I was going to be, presenting to a couple of the guys kind of what what we offer but it was, thankfully it was guys that I had previous relationship with and was really comfortable with um and so I felt I felt like it was a I treated it like a job opportunity you know it was something that I'd never done before and coach day is always um very aware you know of, of everything going on in the program so yeah I, I took it that way and I'm thankful I did We know that you had a pretty active role last year as that director of assistant. Yeah. Do you, do you anticipate the responsibilities being any different? What, what do you think this looks like for you now? Um, I, I don't think a lot is different. Um, I certainly felt like the linebacker coach last year. I think the guys would have said the same thing. It's the little things that um, – it's the little things to me that, you know, maybe not doing some things in the breakdown, you know, that a, that a graduate assistant does – being able to have my own office is to be honest, like when you're, when you're meeting with the guys and we were kind of meeting in the defensive staff room and everyone's trying to get ready for practice. Right. So people are walking in and out. And I think just having my own space, uh, that's something that I, I mean, it's a little thing, but it's something I'm looking forward to definitely. Um, and, and so I think for me, it's, it's all those just, just knowing that the title brings that that's your, like those are your guys. Those, that's your room, and there's a lot of responsibility with that. But I, but I cherish that. Now what? Yeah. Like, what do you? What's the difference in you as a coach after year two? <sighs> Man, I, I think a lot of it is. You know, I think I spoke about it last year. It's teaching progression is one thing, um, <clears throat> and now, thankfully, being in the same scheme for two years in a row, I think will be very beneficial. Um, you know, year one at Notre Dame, you're learning how to teach it, you know, and you forget what young college players don't know. And then coming over here, a lot of it was trying to learn um, what Knowles was, not only his scheme, but how he wanted it to be coached. And now understanding the scheme and kind of what it is, you can just dive deeper. And um so I'm really excited about it. You know, I'm looking forward. It's a big spring for our guys, you know, um, with Cody and CJ and 
uh, Gabe Powers and Arvell Reese. So like, there's a lot of guys that are going to be fighting for for playing time. I think Cody's really the only one with starts under his belt. So it's a big spring for a lot of for a lot of our guys. With all the other, we call it a patch. With all the other uh, the guys, you know, with with all the other support staff, we're all. I don't even know how many of us are in there, but we all sit in the same room and all have our own computer and yeah, got the job done. Well, there's no windows, so it can get pretty, <laughs> you have no idea. You have no idea what time of day it is, um, which sometimes can be a blessing, but it's, uh, I tell you what though, there's a lot of good camaraderie in there. A lot of great guys in that room and uh, it could be really, it could be really funny at times. I'll tell you that much. Let me count. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six guys. Six guys in the office. And that's just when like we're in there and the what I used to say, the real coaches are off in their offices. And now when everyone convenes, you know, you got quite a few, quite a few guys in there. You feel like you have more of a voice now than you did a year ago, year ago, I'm saying. Yeah. I do. I do. I think Yeah, and I think early on, um, when I came back here you know, I tried, I was very aware of that. You know, I, I, being a former player here, um, I didn't want anyone in the building to think that I'll put it this way, Tim, I wanted to work for everything. If that makes sense. You know, I didn't want to come back. And I think sometimes there's a stigma with former players because sometimes I think some of them have been that way where they just expect things handed to them. I don't want that to be the case. I wanted to work for everything. And so, you know, a lot of times I would just, absorb a lot of information um as the season went on i you know i felt a little more comfortable expressing stuff but now that the title is what it is i think you know you you got to speak up when when you see things a certain way whether that's scheme wise or technique whatever it is um and and look i think a lot of times last year i agreed with a lot of what we were doing you know i think we had obviously we had a lot of success on defense so Mm -hmm. they, they, they were impressed by you. What do you think you brought last year that you look back on just in the play of linebacker or whatever, you know, that you put your finger on that maybe kind of impressed Ryan as much as uh, your recruiting prowess? Well, I hope there's a, I hope there's a certain um, intelligence that I brought. And I've talked to Cody Simon about this, Tommy Steele, all those guys, but I think there's a certain way to go about preparing Um not only for practicing, but for, for the game and how you see the game that is very unique. And so I try to bring a perspective. I mean, it's one thing to go through and, and learn how to coach technique from clinics and all that stuff. And then when you go out there and live it, like I was blessed to do, you kind of realize what works, what doesn't, what looks really good in practice and what doesn't actually apply. And I'm constantly trying to reevaluate what I'm teaching these guys because there's a lot of things that I've been taught that I'm like, this doesn't work. And then there's certain things that will work for certain players and won't, you know, there's certain skill sets that maybe a gay powers has that CJ Hicks doesn't have and vice versa. Right. Like, so you're always trying to cater your techniques to the room as a whole, but also to the individual. And I just think playing gives me a perspective of, I also know mentally and physically what these guys are going through. I know what plays are realistic to make and what aren't. Um, I think the guys appreciate that, you know, because I, I know Tommy is Tommy and I have talked about it where he just felt that having the perspective of someone who has done it um, before at the level that I was blessed to do it at, just kind of gave him that when I would say something, it carried some it carried some weight. James, is there a chance that uh, Sonny Styles could join your room? Maybe a better question for you in spring. Is there a chance Sonny's going to move down the uh, linebacker? I think that's a question probably above me, but I, I think Sonny has such a rare skill set in the sense that you saw it some a little bit where he would play kind of the overhang last year. And you didn't really know what he was. This is a safety, right? Or is this more of an outside backer? You know, is he a old school Sam, you know, <laughs> to use those terms? He's just so versatile. And so I think there's a lot of different roles that we can kind of put Sonny in to kind of bring out the best in him. I think with his body size and his age, um, when you try to project him forward, he's kind of in that, um, Isaiah Simmons mix, if you remember that name, where you're like, what really is he? You know, is he a safety? He's, a, he's just a weapon. Um, 
And so I think that's something that we have to kind of evaluate this spring is kind of where to put him to not only best suit what we want to do as silver bullets, but also what's best for his future. They just got to play. And it, I think it all comes down to consistency. Um, consistency breeds confidence. So, you know, if you want to, you know, put your stake on a position, you got to do it day in and day out. And I think, you know, the vision that I have for our room is hopefully we come out of this spring to where we have at least four guys that have earned the right to play. And that's my hope. And I don't know if that'll happen, but what I mean by that is like, I thought last year we had three guys that earned the right to play. I thought with the way Cody Simon prepared during the spring and then in the fall, quite frankly, looking back, I wish I would have played Cody probably a little more um, last fall. He earned it. So I think when you look at it, it's like, okay, can, do we have four players, maybe five that can earn the right? Cause if I think if you play well enough, the season's going to be really long with this 12 game playoff. Right. So you're looking at what 16 games or something. So we're going to have to rotate if we have the ability to now, if only two guys show up and prove that they're trustworthy, then two will play. But I hope that we have a room that uh, is reflected kind of what, what Brian has in his room where it's guys are constantly iron sharpening iron, trying to claw for the field and for playing time. And I hope that's what we can have not only exiting this spring, but heading in the fall camp. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, another thing I'm excited about when you're a full-time coach is not signaling. Um, <laughs> you know, it's stressful, man. And obviously for big reason with, a lot of the well-publicized stuff that kind of went on around signaling in our conference, I think it's very stressful. And when you're trying to come up for, I mean, you're talking about week after week changing signals. I took up a lot of your time. You became an expert in sign language sometimes with some of these calls. And I think not having to do that in a serious point of view is the fact that like when I'm signaling, I'm sitting there waiting for what Jim's going to call next where I don't really have, I didn't have time to digest what was the last, what happened on that play, right? You kind of had to separate coaching and signaling where I think now just being able to to coach I have a lot better pulse on, okay, what are the plays that are actually happening? Cause that's a lot to handle when it's, when it's, uh, when it's going on and you had to have three, sometimes we had five signalers up and trying to confuse people on who's active, who's not. Um, but I think also, you know, this spring, for instance, like you have to think about it, like does Cody Simon need a lot of reps? I don't think so. I think there are young players who need to make a lot of mistakes because I think some guys learn from making mistakes. And if you don't give them the opportunity to make a lot of mistakes, will they really truly grow? Um, and so I think, you know, this spring, I got to be even more intentional on rotations, even within practice. I love the helmet speakers. Yeah. I played with it. Now uh, you're still going to have to have signals because of tempo and you're going to, I mean, you can imagine in the shoe, if, if a team, if the crowd's getting into it and it's second down, they go tempo on third down, you know, you can, you can communicate it in. Now it depends on, is it just the mic or are they going to let a mic linebacker? I mean, or are they going to let the whole defense have I mean, a lot of that has to be ironed out because in the NFL, it's a green dot. It's one guy. So you, you would get the call and then it'd be on you to signal it or yell it to everybody else in the defense. Um, which I know during the bowl games, some of the teams had it where the whole defense would have the mic. Now, that would be a dream, but just because, you know, it would, it would prevent obviously a lot of the sign stealing and stuff that happens. Jimmy, are you, a, you were really diplomatic in your answer about sign language. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but are you lobbying for him to move to your room? Um, and then also, is I think every coach in our defensive staff would lobby for Sonny to come to their room. I think he just has that, he has that versatility and that skill set. Is that kind of up to him and Nick at this point? Or. And then he shows up in the spring and you reevaluate what his size is and or like how does that process look for you? I think it's a combination probably of everybody. I think it's probably Coach Knowles and Coach Day talking about I think there's a balance of what's best for our defense and what's best for Sonny's future. He's a I mean, he's a big human. And uh, when you look at his body size, I think that he would um, he would excel, obviously, as a linebacker. I also think that he has a unique skill set to where he can play out in space like he did last year. So I think it's just trying to figure out what does Sonny want to do? What do we think is best for the Buckeyes and also with his future? Yeah. I, 
I think just consistency, to be honest with you. Uh, CJ has all the potential in the world. He does. And um, I think sometimes he's just got to, he's just got to cut it loose and go play. And I think a lot, I think honestly, I, I expect a big spring from CJ. I think he, with the way he has attacked this off season workouts, um, the way he's carried himself, I expect him to take a jump and look some, for some guys, it's easy to come in right away and just go and play. And for some, it takes a little bit more development, but I think CJ's getting to a point where, uh, hopefully this spring, there's a lot of growth and, and maybe some of that will come with just the fact, Hey, this position is for the taking, right? Like, and I think some guys thrive on that and we'll find out kind of how he reacts to it, but I'm a big fan of CJ Hicks. I always have been. Cause I think he, like you said, he has such a raw, um, and rare kind of skill set to where he can just physically, he has so many traits that you love, you know, at the linebacker position. Yeah. Gabe, look, I mean, Gabe looks good as well. And I think Gabe last year, I can't think of players. Cody Simon's definitely one, but Gabe powers got significantly better from last spring all the way through the fall and into the winter. You know what I mean? So as the season went on, you would notice him, kind of making plays in practice uh, routinely to where you're like, okay, I think the light bulb is coming on for Gabe. And so I can't, I can't speak enough when you talk about those two and talk about Arvell Reese, how big this spring will be for them because it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to see who's going to be in there alongside Cody Simon. And like I said earlier, whether that's just one guy and it's two players playing, you know, which I hope it's not because my hope is we're able to keep, people fresh for this long haul of a season. Yeah, I think I think seeing how how Jim calls a game and his thought process um, is fascinating because he really is brilliant with how, I mean, when you go back and self scout on when he made certain calls against certain formations and you're like, my goodness, this guy is on, <laughs> you know, with, with what he's deciding to call. I think just being with him, Tim, for the whole year, you got to see how he approached the game. You got to see kind of his expectations. And then I think with with someone like like Jim, like when you don't know, you got to ask a question, kind of like what he's looking for. But I think you just, you know, in year one, we're getting to know, know somebody and you're working with them. And then now it's like, okay, I know what he expects. And so I think there's just experience that has been, um, that has been very fruitful. And I'm, I think, you know, I'll be better for it this year, having been through a full season with him. It does exist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's um, – I mean, you mentioned Arvell, CJ, Mitch Melton probably is another candidate. Um, it's definitely a part of our, our scheme. You know, we didn't use it last year, but two years ago they used it a lot. And, you know, as we go through and we um, self-scout, we're trying to figure out, hey, what are we bringing to the table for, for this season? So, to be honest with you, uh, we haven't gotten to those conversations yet about kind of that or who will coach it, but I think it's something that's definitely unique to Jim's scheme, and I think it can be very beneficial for us. But you always weigh, I guess this is some this is you know something to ask Jim is you always weigh, hey, we have all this stuff in the system, and how much of all of that do we really need versus what do we actually do really well so our guys can play really fast. And there are some times where you need a lot, and there's some times where you don't need much. You can just go play. And um, I think that's for Coach Knowles to decide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think um, yes. Um, so when you go in there and make the board, um, yeah, you're you're ranking them the way you see them. 
And Coach Day has always said that, like, you're the head coach of your position. You're the one in charge uh, to each of us. And so with the title comes that responsibility. So uh, I think the reaction, I'll tell you what, it's it's nice to be able to tell them now that, like, no, like, I am the linebacker coach. I don't just coach the linebackers because there's a difference there. I've had that used against me over the last year, quite honestly, to where parents or recruits have said, essentially like how do i know you're going to be there i won't name names but other schools have said hey he's not even going to be there he's gonna have to leave to get a full-time role and so you kind of have to navigate that um not anymore thankfully but uh i've i I mean when you're here you don't like i don't I, i try to be an ambassador of ohio state i love this school it's changed my life um it's done wonders for me and my family to play here, uh, recruit your position at the school you went to, at the place that you love, it's so natural. And so, you know, when when you're explaining it to people, like I'm sure there are some coaches have to come off as car salesmen, like there ain't none of that because I've lived it. And I think that's a huge benefit when you're talking to young people, trying to convince them to come to your school. It's like, this is what it did for me. And the fact that I'm not from Ohio, I give another, that's a whole nother perspective when you're talking to kids not from Ohio. Um, but now that I've been through here and the brotherhood has obviously accepted me and Buckeye nation is so incredible. It's like, there's a reason why I'm, why I'm here. Cause I love this place and I want to raise my girls around this place because of how special it is and how it changed my life. And I know it can change all these other young men's lives. <laughs> oh, I didn't really even get, get into it much with Bill O'Brien uh, when he was here. I wanted to bring up the fact that I think when I was with the Saints, we practiced against him when he was the head coach of the Texans. And the, what I think is the hardest practice I've ever gone through in my life. I consider myself really like I, I was an effort guy. Um, the whole like four to six, A to B plus two, like that's me. I can live that all day as a player. But that practice in Houston, uh, when I was with the Saints, when we were, I mean, that was, gosh, I think Johnny Simon was there, Braxton was there, Mike Thomas was a rookie. We had some Buckeyes all over the field. But that was the first time in a practice of my career where I thought about, like, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. The humidity in, in Houston that day, I wanted to bring that up because I think, I think that was a beast. That right there was a beast. No, I didn't. You know, Tim, I didn't. I, I think I was so comfortable in the respect that I knew the players that I was going to talk to. I had relationships with them. I had I knew the material that I had to present. And so I was re- like I was just ready. There wasn't a I wasn't anxious. There was no nervousness about it. Because I was a lot of it was just talking ball with them. And that's, you know, that comes second nature to me. So being able to sit there and explain how I can help each of those young men develop um, and become the best version of themselves, not only as football players, but as young men, I think that there wasn't some kind of like big study session that needed to happen because it's, it's just talking ball. <laughs> yeah well my, my wife always says that i have no i have no problem just talking she says i'm the talker in the relationship so i think just finding conversation um look if you in recruiting if you enjoy people it's really i think it's easy you're just trying to get you're trying to get to know everyone and you're trying to figure out who are the decision makers and a lot of these kids families or friends coaches um And you're getting to know them. And if you keep getting to know them in an authentic manner and build a relationship over time, I think it works out well for you. If you just go through the motions and all that, I think that's where people can get in trouble for my short time in doing it. So you just have to be intentional, pay attention, and take interest in in these uh, young people. And I think, you know, the more it's just like anybody, like at first you might talk to some people, they're quiet, and you keep talking to them, talking to them, get comfortable, and they open up. It's the same way in recruiting. Why do you want to do 
job. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, when I retired, I think for about eight months, Bill, I thought about, it's a really hard moment when you watch film and you're like, okay, I need to do X, Y, Z. And then it dawns on you, my body can't do X, Y, Z anymore. That's hard to come to grips with when you love the game so much. And so since fourth grade, I've been told when practices, what lifts to do, your life's kind of been mapped out around this game that you love and you're obsessed with since fourth grade. For eight months, it took me a while to really, I don't know if bitterness is the right word, just almost like a frustration that you couldn't participate in the game you loved anymore after I decided to retire. And so I tried to figure out like what else really interests you. And it dawned on me after eight months, like your love is football. Like your major was football. Like, yes, I have a degree in communications. I used it doing radio and TV, but my first love has always been football. And so I felt like the PhD was in that. And so I was like, okay, at first, that's why I got in the media. I wanted to be around the game. And then once I was in media, I felt myself getting fired up whenever I did the coaches interviews. And I just asked myself one off season, I'm like, I think I was getting to be 35 years old. I'm like, if you don't jump into this, you might look back and really regret it. And so once I jumped into it, I knew it was the right thing to do. I think a lot of it is because I love young people. So I want to see young people get to live their dream out like I was able to. I joke all the time. There's a three star from Minnesota, but really like my singular focus was just, I'm going to keep playing football until they don't let me anymore. And when you come to a place like Ohio state, whether you're blessed to play four or five years here and that's it, or whether you're blessed to play 10 years in the league, like this town and this fan base, if you treat it right, will take care of you for life and it becomes your family. And so I think as I dealt kind of in media, and then I jumped into coaching. It was like, this is obvious. This is obvious. You love the game of football. You love young people. And I felt the coaches that I played for, Luke Fickle, Jim Tressel, Steve Spagnola, the Chiefs, they were all great developers of men as well. And probably the three most impactful men in my life outside of my father. So the thought that I could hopefully be that to somebody else, I think is what gets me up every morning. You know, and I tell a lot of these recruits, like, yes, I want to be there with you in the green room when Goodell calls your name, right? Like, that's a lot of these kids want to get developed. But I also hope that these men call me when they decide to get engaged someday or get married and they're like, hey, coach, I want you there. Because that's the kind of relationship that I had with Luke Fickle. Um, that's the kind of relationship I had with Spags, is that they were, it was more than just ball. And so I think that's why I wake up and I attack it every day. You talked about working with young people young people and uh, we talk about working with young people so does that mean you're a college coach or, or is a coach coach and the nfl could be in your future i mean i'm just glad i don't think i've taken a i'm still riding the high of being a linebacker coach at ohio state so you know i think for me it's it's how do i develop my focus right now to be honest is how am i going to develop multiple guys through this spring to where we're comfortable as a defensive staff playing four or five guys at linebacker. You know, I don't think about all that. Um, wherever my feet are, I just want to be present to helping those around me, you know, and impacting not only guys in my room, to be honest, but also, you know, whether it's talking trash to the DBs, because that's all they do, you know, it's talk trash every day, you know, it's kind of working around those relationships with everybody on the team, you know, and just trying to be a positive influence in the locker room. I was hopeful. I didn't know. Like, you never really know because what I've learned, you know, from getting into it is that there's a lot of moving puzzle pieces, right, that need to happen, right? And, and um, but as things kind of started to go, you know, towards the end of the year and, and moves started to get made, I was hopeful. But if you would have said two years ago that, hey, within two years, you'd be the linebacker coach at Ohio State, um, I'd probably say it was a long shot, not, not from a credibility standpoint, I think more so from, the dominoes that would have needed to fall to kind of make it happen. So I'm just grateful that those dominoes fell and that I'm here and, and I've been given the opportunity. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And in all honesty, I mean, it was a call from Heartline when I was at Notre Dame that uh, was inquiring about, you know, coming back, you know, and I've always kind of talked to Brian about it as he, 
developed in his coaching career and you see kind of where he's at. Um, and I think, you know, when you have a receiver room like he has where he's consistently convincing the top wide receiver recruits in the country to come to a room that is already full of the top wide receiver recruits in the country, like that takes a certain mindset that he's developed. But it's not just because he's recruiting the best kids. He's re recruiting the right kind of kids as well that are willing to compete and push the room forward. So I think, you know, that's a good example, um, I think, for all of our position rooms to kind of try to emulate. Hey, James. Yep. Minnesota State High School champion, Hockey Championships getting ready to start. That means we've got a video about three weeks away of the, the all-pair team. Yeah. Can you talk about your flow as a high school I had a nice flow. I had a flow back in the day. I, You know, you had to get in the shower in the morning, put a ball cap on. I have straight hair, so I had to try to wing it out of the cap, and then the wings would, like, die by period two in school. Um, but I retweeted. Did you see what I retweeted the other day? The Trojans beat uh, the yeah. Hornets at Braemar Arena which I had one of my sickest goals at a sweet backhand, sweet backhand. I was on the power play. I came from below the, the face-off circle. The goalie tried to poke check, missed, boom, went backhand, top shelf. I remember skating over to Edina's student section, jumping up on the glass, shaking it. I mean, those are good memories right there now. When you win at Braemar, when you win at Braemar Arena, those are good memories. Yep, yep. You ought to come out to the uh, over 40 pickup hockey on Friday. I know. I, everyone keeps saying that, man. Are you, do you I need to. Do you still play at all? I, you know what? I have. 